there's more to an AI implementation than just the tools. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is David Linthicum, Chief Cloud Strategy Officer at Deloitte Consulting. Welcome, David. Thank you very much for having me. Glad to be here. So give us a brief summary of your background as it relates to artificial intelligence adoption. Yeah, you know, it's funny, I'm 56 and I actually worked on AI systems directly out of college and that wasn't last year. You know, that was when I, that was when I was uh, um, uh, 21 years old. And so taught AI at the college level using M1 Lisp, you know, some of the early AI based languages. Uh, and then worked on it from the research point of view for a long time. I actually coined the term um, uh, intelligent middleware, the ability to have AI systems think and the ability to combine AI systems that are typically operational. So it's been, it's been kind of, a, I, I think, a, um, a huge interest of mine throughout my career, just understanding the potential of that. In fact, it was one of the first computing systems I worked on. And, and it was kind of strange for me to get back into procedural computing where I didn't have the ability to create knowledge engines and have the knowledge engines learn. But back then, the AI systems were just out of reach. I mean, if you wanted to build something of any significance, you know, it would be $100 million of hardware and software in the data center space. And so most businesses couldn't afford it. Um, my background is, is new technology, high advanced technology, where the ball is going to be kicked, you know, looking at the next generation stuff. A lot of cloud stuff recently. I do the cloud blog for InfoWorld. Um, you know, do a lot of writing for IEEE. Do a lot of speaking. Spoke at lots of AI AI shows in the back. And really, it's finding the potential for this in the use cases within business, which I think is the problem that needs to be solved. You must see a lot of companies with AI successes and failures in your role. How is cloud accelerating the adoption of AI? Well, now it's cheap and good. <laughs> you know, back, like I said, in the days when I was working on this, when I was 22, uh, 23, it was expensive and, and not very good. I mean, we could do very procedural things. We could, you know, have a communication with an AI engine and have it learn over time. But as far as the ability to pump it through data that we have around today, to put a petabyte of information into a knowledge engine and have it train the, tra train the model is something that's game changing. So... Just the matter of the fact that data storage is cheap, um, we can use tra training data out of this raw data systems that are out there. These things are available, both publicly available, economics data, genome data, things like that, and mix it with our own data within the enterprises and create tag training information and have those flow into the models on a daily basis and do so for $13 you know, each time it happens. You know, that's amazing. You know, that's beyond science fiction to me based on someone who kind of came from that environment. And so the ability for businesses to understand that seems to be the challenge now and then find the use cases that they need. I think it's game changing technology for the businesses that are able to leverage this as a force multiplier. They're going to be disrupted in their space. And right now they're getting disrupted in this, whether it's insurance or, you know, healthcare or, or retail. And certainly there's lots of examples in retail with this technology that's able to, in essence, become the ability to do the business in a much more better way, to automate things that we've yet to automate, the ability to embed you know, uh, analytically superior decisions into our business processes. And, and it's, just, it's just right there in front of the businesses right now. And sometimes it's frustrating to watch the disruptors who are for small, uh, leveraging this technology, but the larger businesses who should be leveraging it or not. What are the elements of AI adoption success and what are the common reasons for difficulty? I think it's really finding the um, use case for it. I think a lot of it was people are misappropriating AI technology. And so they're using it on applications that really don't need it um, and not using it on applications that really do. So data intensive applications typically that make decisions in terms of how the business is running are really, really where AI is going to shine. Uh, the ability for me to automate and make decisions around having zero inventory controls based on knowledge models that are trained over for years of data in terms of what inventory I need and the ability to take other things into consideration such as weather or even you know, flu epidemics that are occurring and the ability to kind of just demand models and adjust orders and just inventory control systems based on all these degrees of knowledge that are coming in. 
we have a tendency to kind of look at AI as kind of more tactical in nature. So I see it bound to sales analytics systems and, you know, things where they're just making single dimension or two dimensional decisions. When really the power of this technology is the ability to consider thousands of different data elements that are coming from a thousand different places, you know, something that you can never do as a human. And then the ability to learn through this experience over time to optimize these systems to be better going forward. And so the opportunity is there for these businesses if they're willing to make the investment to change their processes and change the expectations of technology and bind along these core systems. We're seeing innovative companies that are startups that are you know, leveraging this stuff, um, but they're benefiting from more of the tactical things because they're typically small companies working on very simple business problems. But the large companies, the multinational companies, are the ones where this stuff can shine. And what they need, they need to uh, have the courage to do it because it is leveraging new technology and doing disruptive changes within the organization. And sometimes it's considered a career ender in some instances. And then also the ability to fund these projects. I mean, we have to kind of step out of the fact that we're only going to spend 1% of our revenue on IT you know, perhaps get up to 1.5 or even 2% for the next three or four years as we re retool for this technology. So what is the right mix of talent needed for a successful AI adoption? Do, do we need more than just data scientists? Yeah, that's a great question because I think we're, we're, we don't have the talent that we need. And I think it is someone who's both a knowledge engineer and also a data scientist. And you need those, that kind of duality of people who understand it. And I see people who have data science skills but not, not uh, machine learning skills, artificially intelligent model skills, things like that. They don't know how to build and train a model. Or vice versa, you see people who are focused on the artificial intelligence stuff that don't understand how data fits in. And also the ability to understand how all this fits into the new platforms of the cloud and how this fits into different data sources. So it's really um, a rare person who kind of understands all of those particular things. And, what I think we need to do is kind of focus on teams of people, you know, that understand different aspects of it and that are, you know, run by someone who has a vision in terms of where we're looking to go, but people that are experts in solving the certain problem. Because it probably is too much to expect that everybody understand cloud and AI systems and training data and da how data feeds work and how batch systems work versus real time systems work and application interfaces and all those sorts of things. But you need that a uh, vast amount of uh, understanding in order to make things, these things work. How important is identifying and cleaning data, laying the data foundation, if you will, at the early stages of the project? It's absolutely, uh, it's, the, it's the most important thing. The ability to have ground, to have truth to the information that we're looking at. You have to remember that it, AI systems aren't really magic. In other words, they're not gonna figure out that they have bad data. They're, they're gonna take things, even biases of, inf of people who are training the system and bring those forward as, as the brain in, in terms of how they're understanding the information. So we're focusing a lot on, on technology that deals with cleaning the data correctly and tagging the data correctly. So when we're training the systems, we're doing so with good, you know, good data. I mean, AWS systems such as GroundTruth, which is their ability, SageMaker GroundTruth has the ability to um, and that's on the top of my brain because I just did a tutorial on that. You ultimately has the ability to really automate the ability to clean this data up so it's in good condition. And you're only gonna have a trained model if you have the data in good condition. And so people have a tendency to, to skip this step. Um, and so they may train a model with just raw data if that data is not prepped correctly and not modeled correctly, then they're just gonna get a bad trained model. It's not gonna provide the results and the predictions that they need. What single piece of advice can you offer an implementation team getting ready to start their first AI adoption project? Yeah, I think ultimately you're gonna benefit from a lot of planning. Uh, don't focus on the tools and technology. We, I, you enter AI projects and the first thing you're talking about you know, is SageMaker and TensorFlow and you know, having big discussions about which one to use or all of them to use and how they're gonna be, how they're gonna be done. The big thing is what problems are we gonna solve? And what do we want the AI system to understand long-term? And how do we get to a point where we're going to design something which is gonna benefit from the gathering of knowledge going forward and be able to make their, the, this knowledge better over time? 
And I don't think that really kind of goes into it. Again, we think tactically, we just want to use AI in some sort of a small, you know, small application. That's just a waste of time. You're going to end up spending 50% more time in building that application, 50% more in technology, and not get the benefit from it. So number one, pick something that's fairly grandiose, that's really going to benefit from this technology, the ability to deal with multidimensional knowledge, and do the planning it takes to understand the requirements around it and get to the correct learning models, get to the correct approaches, whether it's supervised or unsupervised, it, you know, learning, all these sorts of things, decisions have to be made. Those need to be pre-planned. You can't do those as you go. David Linthicum, Chief Cloud Strategy Officer at Deloitte Consulting. If somebody wants to connect with you, David, how can they do that? Uh, check me out at LinkedIn, uh, Linthicum, L-I-N-T-H-I-C-U-M. That's the hard part. Or you can uh, follow me on Twitter at uh, twitter.com slash David Linthicum, all one word. Sounds good. Thanks again for joining us. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.